This is Andrew with GY6 Vids, and in today's episode, we're taking a look at the Angston Arms UDP9. Now, a lot of you probably already heard about the UDP9. Angston Arms is a good company, but they're a new company starting out. They're definitely building their name in the industry for the ever so popular 9mm AR platform. For one, these are a lot of fun to shoot, especially if you're going out to plank because it's a lot cheaper to shoot 9mm than it is for 5.56 five, or 223. And it gives you the unique ability to have pretty much an MP5 without the cost. I mean, granted, this isn't full auto, but semi automatic is what most MP5s are, but they're god awfully expensive. When you have a pistol version AR 15 that shoots 9mm, you're getting that MP5 feel, but you're getting the AR platform and all the components that go along with it. So you've got the ambidextrous safety, you have the mag release, bolt release, all the same as an AR 15, so it's seamless transition if you're used to shooting an AR 15. But shooting other 9mm pistols or rifles, you're going to have a learning curve to understand the mechanics of how it functions, the safety mechanism, how to release the magazine. It doesn't take a lot of time, but but you know, even breakdown and be able to clean your firearm, it takes a little learning curve to understand the new platform that you might be using. But with this and with AR 9mm platforms, you have the seamless transition from an AR 15 to this rifle. So it does make it nice, plus a lot of the features are interchangeable. So you can do out hand guards, you can do muzzle brakes, obviously you're going to have to do it for 9mm for sure, but you can also put on stocks, you can put on buffer tubes, you can put on pistol grips, you can drop in triggers, you can use magazines, but in this case, it would be a Glock magazine. And we'll get into these magazines here in a second, because if you had a Glock 19 as your sidearm, you can transition with magazines from your sidearm to your primary weapon without having to worry about carrying a bunch of extra mags. You carry one magazine, it fits with your rifle, and it fits with your sidearm. Or if you really want to get froggy, you can just drop out your magazine, and then you can pop in a 100 round drum mag. So this is an option. I mean, granted, it may not be for everyone. These mags aren't cheap either, so that is an option. But most of the time, people are going to stick with the standard Glock mags. Uh, these stick mags are very abundant and a lot more cost effective than buying the drum magazine. But they're a lot of fun to shoot either way. This is the ETS Group Clear Magazines. They make Glock mags that are clear so you can see when you're about to run out of ammunition rather than going off of weight. Before we move on from mags, I do want to say a big shout out to Action Firearms Florida for sending out this 100 round drum mag. It's one of the coolest things I've gotten in the mail in a long time. I love drum magazines. They're a lot of fun to shoot and they just look awesome when they're on the gun. So big shout out to Action Firearms Florida. Go in the description. There is a link to their website. Great people, great prices, and it's always good to support small local gun shops because we need more of them, that's for sure. So moving on to the details of the UDP-9, let's get into some of the specs and tell you more about this rifle system. Now, on the pistol version right here, I have done some upgrades. This is not how it comes from the factory. Granted, we do have the ETS group, clear magazines. We also have an ATI pistol grip on here. We also put in the CMC drop-in trigger. These things are fantastic. Seriously, pull out the old trigger, drop in this system, screw in four screws, and you're done. And it's three and a half pounds at a single stage. We also throw in a charging handle. It's one of my favorite charging handles. It's based off the Raptor design. We also have the Lantac Dragon 9 millimeter muzzle brake on here. Forces the gases up and keeps the barrel down, which helps a lot with recoil because with the pistol version, you can't put this against your shoulder. It's a pistol. It's not an SBR. For right now, you can put this stock against your cheek, and use it just like that. As long as there's no contact to your shoulder, it's legal. But the problem is you have this wobbling sensation when you're shooting. So diverting gas and minimizing recoil as much as you can definitely helps a lot. So on the specs of the UDP-9, the barrel on the pistol version is six inches long at a one in 10 twist. Going over to the rifle version, you're gonna have very similar setup. Everything's gonna be the same except for it's longer. And this allows you to have it as a rifle. You can put it on your shoulder, have better recoil reduction as well as accuracy downrange. I haven't seen a huge jump in accuracy going from a short barreled nine millimeter up to a 16 inch. I mean, there's a little bit more velocity and a little bit more accuracy, but not by much. I prefer to have the pistol version because it reminds me of an MP5, which is one of my favorite guns of all time. I love the nine millimeter round and I love shooting it. It's a lot of fun and having it in an AR platform with parts that you can transition from other rifles. It's a lot of fun, but the barrel length on this is 16 inches, also one in 10 twist. UDP-9 does have a flared mag well, so it allows for a little bit easier access when you're inserting magazines. Now, minus the Vortex Optic Diamondback HP, as well as the Zero Bravo hand stop and the ETS Group clear magazine, everything's gonna be what you're gonna get from Angston Arms on this rifle. You're gonna have the bad lever on here, the Battle Arms Development ambidextrous safety, as well as their charging handle, which is still fantastic. I just prefer the Raptor charging handle. I like the ambidextrous aspect of it. The Magpul furniture, from Angst and Arms. There's a Magpul adjustable stock, as well as Magpul grip. So the trigger is nice on this. It's not as good as highest end triggers out there, but I mean, it's nice. It has a little bit heavier brake on it. I'd say about five or six pounds. Let's see the reset. A little bit of slap on your finger when it resets, but still the brake of this 
is not bad. We will be testing the accuracy out of this longer barreled rifle as well as the pistol version downrange at 50 yards. Past 50 yards, nine millimeter rounds start kind of doing their own thing. You know, some people may agree or disagree, whatever, that's your own opinion, but I've seen rounds fly in high speed and they just kind of start kind of wobbling down range. They're not doing quite what they should be doing. So I'm gonna do it at 50 yards. It'll give this a good test. You're not gonna be going out and hunting a prized elk with these things anytime soon. So pinpoint accuracy at longer ranges doesn't matter. This just allows you to have a rifle, which means you can put an adjustable stock. And this allows you to have a pistol and you just can't put it on your shoulder. I prefer the pistol myself. I love this thing. It's a lot of fun. I'm gonna put this one down, go back to my favorite. Rah. If you can see on the trigger guard, it also is oversized. So if you have gloves on, cold weather, you can get your finger in there, especially if you've got meat hooks like I do with bigger fingers. When you go to put your fingers into the trigger guard sometimes with gloves or even without gloves, it's a little cumbersome. It also has last round hold open, so when you're done shooting, it does lock back and that does allow you to see that you're empty. Sometimes a lot of these rifles will just drop forward, especially nine millimeter versions or odd calibers. You might've noticed also the ejection port on this UDP-9. It is appropriately sized for nine millimeter casings. So you don't have this extra large opening like on an AR-15 because you don't have a dust cover on this. Definitely some good machining. I like the look of it. It's very sleek and sexy. I like the extra features of having the mag release a little bit different as well. Uh, fantastic work so far. Feels great, shooting great. Let's put some rounds down range and get into the video. So let's try out some accuracy down range. We have a target at 50 yards. This is the Triumph System zombie target. We'll be at 12 power magnification on the Vortex Diamondback HD, so we'll have a good picture on that target. We are using Stand One Armory's 9mm ammunition. We'll be using this all video long, so this is what we're going to be shooting. We're not using hollow points. We're using strictly FMJs. We have shot hollow points out of this already, and there is no malfunction. There is no failure to feed. Let's get this going. Get some shots down range. Also, uh, you may be noticing nine millimeter shells in my ear for ear pro. These are actually ear pro. They have a solidified ear pro in it and they're an actual nine millimeter shell. So don't think I'm going old school and just shoving brass in my ears. That's a no, no. I mean, it'll work if you don't have anything else, but it, you'll go deaf eventually. <laughs> but these are from luckyshotusa.com. All right, let's go five to the brain first. Yeah, I'll take that. Like I said, I'm not trying to be, you know, marksmanship quality with a nine millimeter, but I want to keep a decent pace, not like one shot, then 20 seconds later, another shot. I'm trying to keep a decent pace. Let's go to the left lung. Ah, pulled that last one. Not bad though, I like the group. <clears throat> Let's go to the heart. I like it. Definitely take that group and then to the right lung. Ah. Okay. One of those shots in the right lung is me. Slight trigger flinch. But not bad, even with the trigger flinch, it still is a decent group with nine millimeter rounds at 50 yards. Uh, definite potential to go further, but like I said, for an accuracy test with a nine millimeter rifle, there's no point going past 50 right now. Okay, so now we have the zombie threat down target at 25 yards. We'll try out the accuracy with the pistol version with a regular standard red dot. There's no magnification. This is the Spark AR. Let's see what the accuracy is. Downrange. Okay, let's go to the heart.
Okay, I think we're hitting slightly high to the right. One shot got pulled into the lung. Not that big of a deal, but definitely getting some decent accuracy with zero magnification. Let's try a little bit more. Cool. Let's see what we get on the right lung. All right, we'll call that good. I'm getting a little bit off track. Um, the biggest thing is, is when you're shooting for accuracy, you wanna aim in the same spot every time, no matter where the bullet goes, that we get a decent group. The hardest thing with this is you can't put it against your shoulder. <laughs> so you gotta rest it on your cheek and it's kind of all over the place. Not an excuse, I don't wanna blame the gun, but it does make it a little bit more difficult. Let's move it along, let's go shoot some more stuff. I think I just cut the line on that one. <laughs> Oh, there's one more. Come on. <laughs> All right, so once again, we're back at our close target acquisition setup. We have three targets at 30 feet. It's not going to be great for long distance because nine millimeters is just not going to get out there and not going to get out there very accurately or with enough power to really do much good. But even a broken clock's right twice a day. So some people can shoot out there and it does hit a target, but it doesn't mean it's going to be consistent because with enough rounds, you're eventually going to hit your target, but it doesn't mean it's consistent. With this gun, this is its workstation. 30 feet, close quarters battle, it's awesome. So we have three targets, sticky targets on there. We also have a hostage situation. We're gonna do that at the end. Uh, mainly wanna see how proficient I am with just bah, pulling up on target and see if I can get a headshot. Uh, we're also gonna throw a suppressor on for that and then do suppress at the end of this little shoot. It's gonna add a little bit of fun in there for you guys. So that's at the end. Let's do some double taps, single shots, some grouping, see how it does at 30 feet. Round is chambered, Let's see what it's got. Let's go uh, main target first, dead center, couple in a row. Yeah, I'll take that. All right, two shots each, double taps. Oh, a little slow on that other one. <laughs> where did I send that one? <laughs> Don't even know where that one went. I think it went just to the right off target. My bad. All right, moving again. Let's go from right to left, double tap. I think we have a low left flyer on the far left. Let's just dump all the rounds I have left on the far right target, see what happens. Yep, definitely doing great. Uh, shots are on target. It's a little wobbly because it's still a pistol, but other than that, it's looking fantastic. Let's get another mag in there. And that is nice, it does have that bolt hole open, so you have the bolt back, so when you're ready to rock and roll, you slap the bolt forward, good to go on the other side. But for right now, <laughs> don't do this. Usually use your armor's wrench to get your muzzle brakes off, but um, this is a Lantac Dragon. It's made like a tank, but I am gonna torque uh, that off and twist this. And off. What we have here is the SEG or Stealth Engineering Group Hancock Suppressor. This is a nine millimeter suppressor, direct thread, not quick detach. Granted, it is nice to have quick detach, but most of the time when I put a suppressor on, I leave it on for the day, but this definitely gets the job done. Got a magazine, good to go. Mag is in, bolt slap, good to go. All right, let's try to save that hostage. Oh, not bad. A little slower than I'd like, but the guy's toast. I like it a lot. Um, I know that ridge looks pretty low, but it's just the camera angle with the punched in lens. It is capturing our rounds. Um, know what's beyond your target. Make sure to have a good backstop and that's what that is. So don't worry about that, but not bad. Let's just dump these rounds on the far left target. <laughs> Woo! 
That is fun. <laughs> yeah. Ah, gotta love the smell of suppressor gas. Okay, ears are in, eyes are on. Hunt around drum mag. <laughs> Man, I love my job. This thing's so much fun to shoot, especially with the drum mag. And like I said before, these systems have ran flawlessly the entire time for the last five or six months. I have about 1,200 to 1,500 rounds to this system, as well as the rifle version. And we've had no malfunctions whatsoever. We haven't had any snow pipes, failures to feed, any issues at all. When we were running traditional Glock mags. Now, when you do not run traditional Glock mags and you go to say the drum mag or to an aftermarket mag like the ETS group clear mags, we had some issues with it. So throughout the video when we were doing sighting in on certain optics, when we were checking for POI shifts, when we put the suppressor on, which is point of impact, sometimes when you put a suppressor on a system you'll have a point of impact change. We were checking for that we were running these mags most of the time and we had some issues off camera and I want to state that. When we ever had an issue we put the regular Glock mags in test to see how it ran and ran flawlessly. And then we would have issues when we put other mags in, whether it be the drum mag or aftermarket mags, whether it be cheaper Glock mags or these very nice mags by ETS Group. In this system, it does have issues with feeding. Now, other than that, there has been zero issues with the gun if you run it with standard Glock magazine. And Engstead Arms also says to run standard Glock magazine. So I was going outside the box to see what would happen and that's the reason why they're probably stating that is the fact that aftermarket mags will have problems with feeding rounds into the barrel. Did we have any issues with the gun firing? Any problems with light primer strikes? Nothing like that whatsoever. Now other issues you will run into is when you run a drum magazine or cheap aftermarket Glock mags, you may run into the situation where last round after fire will not hold the bolt back. It'll just come forward and then seat back down. But when you use factory Glock mags though, every single time we shot, the last round held that bolt open and you were able to use the bolt release. 1500 rounds isn't the most, trust me. This isn't the end all be all test of this system, but 1500 rounds over a period of time, suppressed, unsuppressed, being dirty, never cleaning it at all, except for when we first got it. And we still had no issues. So I'm gonna say Anx and Arms UDP9, Fantastic set. I'm out.